If you're listening to this and you're feeling like, man, if I don't invest $20,000 in my website, I can't really get up my business off the ground until I do that. That's really a limiting belief that I don't think we have to be impacted by anymore. Hey, my name is Jenna Kutcher, and I am obsessed with all things business, marketing, numbers, and helping you to navigate both the messy and the magical seasons of this thing called life. I'm a small town mama who took a $300 camera, grew a successful photo biz, and now I work from home and run a seven figure online business. I teach you the tried and true secrets to building a career you adore. Shy away from the real talk? (laughs) No way. Money, hardship, growth, loss, and marketing are all topics we discuss here. Think of this as your one stop shop for happy hour with a gal pal mixed with business school. Pull up a seat, make sure you're cozy, and get ready to be challenged and encouraged while you learn. This is the Gold Digger Podcast. How often do you go back to your roots, like where it all started? I did this the other day with the Gold Digger podcast, rewinding all the way back to episode number two and my first guest ever on the show, Jen Olmstead. And while I know so much more about podcasting now and our production quality left something to be desired, and I think my voice sounds way different today than it did then, I am pretty dang proud of that conversation with Jen. So much so that I wanted to invite her back on the show for another go around because so much has changed since that episode on November 18th, 2016. Jen Olmstead knows websites and she's one half of the Tonic Site Shop duo that has been helping Jen and Kutcher websites look fab since my very first site design. Jen knows how to present your brand in a way that stands out from the masses and attracts your ideal customers, even without a fully custom web design. So we're talking about what she knows best today, website design. She shares why looking the part doesn't have to mean a totally custom design, the crucial components of any business's website, and the key clues that your site might be in need of a little refresh. Here she is, guest number one, back on the show, my friend, Jen Olmstead. Okay, this is like the greatest treat of all time because I get to invite the OG, the first guest this podcast ever had back to the show, one of my dearest friends, Miss Jen Olmstead. Welcome back to your place called home on the podcast. Oh, I just feel at home. You know, I just feel like I'm coming back, <laughs> coming back home. So excited. <laughs> Oh, I'm so excited. And it's hilarious because both of us, we have come such a long way from four years ago. And I remember literally sitting on the floor of my garage, leaning against a pile of wood, recording your initial show because I hadn't quite figured out that the dogs bark and recording and I should just probably sit in my car and not on the floor. But it brings me back and it just, it makes me so happy to see that our paths are so still intertwined and that we get to have this chance to not redeem ourselves because that episode is still gold, but kind of re-have that conversation with today's era and all that we're navigating as entrepreneurs, as mothers, and as friends. So I'm so excited. I know. It's so crazy. I mean, I don't want to brag, but I'm actually recording this on a real podcast mic right now. (laughs) And I just remember like madly searching my couch cushions the last time for my headphones and then like desperately praying that Amazon on guy you didn't like come ring the doorbell and I, you know I had no idea what he's doing you're like hey Jen I'm gonna start a podcast you want to hop on and I was like yeah sure that's fine <laughs> so we've come a long way baby we really we have. sure have okay so let's pretend that the person that's listening to the show today has not heard us four years ago and maybe that might be a blessing in disguise <laughs> but please reintroduce yourself to our audience who are you what do you do and then we'll talk about how things have evolved over the last four years Yeah, of course. So I am still, still now Jen Olmstead. I am the co-founder and lead designer of Tonic Site Shop. And we sell completely customizable website templates for the modern stylish creative, or as we like to say, website templates for people who probably don't think that they like website templates. (laughs) And so now I think it's been almost seven years ago, my business partner, Jeff, who's amazing, who's who's not on the show, but hi, Jeff, we love you. We basically (laughs) saw this huge problem in the website industry 
industry where there were all of these amazing entrepreneurs and creatives and photographers, and they didn't have websites that showed their level of awesome. They had boring website template syndrome, and it made us really sad. And there were only so many people we could design custom websites for, and we kept having to say no, but we wanted to say yes. you know, And we wanted to give people something that showed who they were at their best and how they looked at their best and what they did at their best online. And so we created Tonic. We created the cure for the common website template. And we launched, we launched with 12 website templates, which I don't recommend. Now people have like (laughs) one at a time, like normal sane people, but we started with 12. And they're all cocktail inspired because both Jeff and I love cocktails and love entertaining and love the idea of like sitting down across the table and sharing secrets and having real talk. And so we built our brand based around cocktails and hospitality. So you'll see like the margarita is one of our newest designs that's super popular. And it feels like a margarita. It's exciting and it's fun and it's casual and laid back and enjoyable. I know your thing is the jalapeno margarita. Um, So you're into this one. And so we have really enjoyed kind of embarking over this journey of growing in the last seven years. And so much has changed in our business. But at the core, it's still the same thing. You know, we're equipping entrepreneurs and creatives with a way to look and feel their best online. And I'm really passionate about that, as you will come to find out in this episode. So I'm excited to talk through all that with you. I mean, you and I have had some very like interesting friend moments from making a charcuterie board in a hotel. What were we? I mean, there are some oh, really man. interesting things we've done. Strong gin and tonics. And Taking pregnancy tests pregnancy together. Tests. <laughs> Uh, We've been through a lot of life together. So on the life front, give us a quick update. I mean, four years is basically a lifetime for us in our early 30s. So tell me kind of where you're at with your life. I know. I mean, just on a side note, I think it's really cool that essentially we met four years ago and we worked on a cus- – we'd never met before that point. We met, we worked in a custom project, a custom website for you, and then we're still close friends who talk like every few days now. You know, yeah. like that's just yeah. really cool to have seen each other's businesses evolve. And thinking back, it's really crazy because, you know, I was the first guest in the second episode of the show. So you just were starting this podcast. You were still yeah. like – a full-time wedding photographer at the time. Yep. You had like, you know, maybe 20,000 Instagram followers. I don't know how many, a lot at the time. It seemed like to me you had so many, but now obviously it's crazy. <laughs> and, you know, and, and it's so interesting just to look back at that time. And at the time, I think one thing we talked about on the show was that I had a two-year-old daughter, Serena, who's now six. And you know, I think I kind of felt like I had figured it out in terms of being a mom and an entrepreneur because I was past the hard part. I was past like the newborn stages and I was back into like this routine that felt really sustainable that I could continue doing. And I was like, okay, I don't know why people complain about this. Like being a mom and a small business owner isn't that hard. And so after that show, I then had baby number two, Sophia, who was like a tiny, adorable bomb that exploded all over my life and business in the best way. And I had to kind of relearn how to do everything and how to get to that balanced place again of work and life. And then since then, I now have Mason, who's 15 months old. So, you know, two babies ago. And so I've had to relearn again, like, where are my priorities? Why am I doing what I do? Why is it worth spending time away from my kids for what I do? And it's really just instilled in me this new passion for making every moment that I'm working count and then every moment that I'm not working count. And I think that our business has really scaled and grown so much over the past four years. You know, we're a seven figure business, which is insane to think about now. And it's wild to think about the fact that it was still a side hustle for me four years ago. You know, I was still doing mostly custom website design. We kind of started this template company that was starting to do well on the side. And then now it's really become this kind of juggernaut of a business that I'm still learning how to be the be a CEO of, you know, because I wasn't really a CEO at that time. I was a designer. And now I'm learning, as you've learned, how to manage a team and how to still get to do what I love. Because if you put me alone in a closet and I got to design, I would be so happy. <laughs> and so I've had to learn the business side of things. And thankfully, I've learned a lot from you over the, I'm sure as everyone listening to this has over the last few years is to someone who like loves the business side. And so if your story kind of like me is that you love the creative part and you don't love the business, I'm standing here as a testimony to be like, you can figure it out. You can get there and there are people who can help. 
But it's definitely been crazy just to see how things have grown and scaled over the past four years. And I think one of the things that is so interesting, as we were talking about a little bit before the show, is that people now realize how very important it is to have a website that you feel great about online. And that's going to resonate and attract your ideal clients. And I think that's the biggest thing that's changed is increasingly there's this hyper awareness of how important brand is and how important it is to have your brand translated well online. And I think that's been a huge shift in the last four years. Yeah. You and I, I feel like we have this sisterhood when it comes to design where literally, I mean, on a weekly basis, we'll walk through pages together and just talk about different design things. And I think that you've done a very beautiful job building that scalable side of your business in terms of templates, because you cannot serve every single person. You cannot, you do not have the capacity to do custom for everyone, but you've still kept that favorite spot for yourself of very, very, very limited custom work that keeps your creativity alive and that keeps you feeling connected to the work that you do in a way that templates could not. And so it's beautiful because you have figured out this secret sauce of serving the masses with these incredible, beautiful resources via your templates while still staying connected to the art of what you do. And I think that that is a very, very tricky thing to navigate as a creator creative person and as someone who understands limited bandwidth specifically as a mom of three. (laughs) Yeah, no, entirely. And yeah, first of all, I think in another life, we were like sister designers working in our own like little Mm -hmm. firm. So I kind of quietly mourn that profession that we probably would have had, but it's still crazy (laughs) that we get to do this still. I'm always like, hey, Jenna, what do you think about this? And she has the best feedback. Just my favorite. But yeah, no, I think that the thing that really even clicked for me though last year was that I needed to approach our templates like I do our custom websites. And when I'm working with custom website client, as you know, there's so much homework. There's so much like getting into the brand and kind of enveloping myself into it. I like to be a design chameleon. You know, I feel like if you see me and my website for a client, then I've messed up because you should be seeing them more clearly because of me. And so I love the, the process of just disappearing into the work. And so for a long time, that was kind of different. My, my custom websites were different from our templates. And I think even in the last year and a half or two years, there was a huge shift where I was like, no, 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 no. I need to have a client in mind who needs something specific from this website template, who has a, a specific kind of brand. And then I'm going to impart all of like the magic and the strategy and the intentionality that I would into a fully custom website into each of these templates so that you feel like, you know, our customers feel like they're getting a fully custom website that was designed just for them. And that's been mm-hmm. the biggest thing that we hear over over and over and over is that, you know, our clients aren't choosing between us and another template. They're saying, I was going to get a custom website, but then I saw this template and it was everything I've ever wanted in a website. And it was like, it was just made for me. And obviously like that just makes me glow like a lightning bug (laughs) every single time someone says that. But that's the goal is like, you don't have to choose anymore between, you know, investing in your brand in some way and investing in another way. You can now say like, I know I need a great website and I want this one right here. And it feels like it was made just for me. Yeah. Let's talk about this whole looking the part, because like you said, over the last four years, but I would say even specifically over this last year, when people have had to quickly pivot into this online world, this virtual world, we are recognizing that we have to not just play the part, but look the part and have a website that communicates what we do, who we serve, how we show up in the world. I want to know, like, what are some myths about creating a website for a new business or for a business that just needs a landing place online that we can bust right now? I love being myth busters. So let's start there. Yeah, totally. I'm all about this. So I think like you just alluded to, one myth that I see so prevalent is that you're not legit until you have a fully custom website. And it's shocking how many people I hear this from. And I think it kind of goes back to imposter syndrome, a feeling like I'm not enough until this. I'm not enough until I work with this person. I'm not enough until a designer gives me something that feels right. And I think it's so important to remember that a designer can't give you a brand. They can really only give your brand something to wear. You know, you're responsible for your brand and for your work and for that output into the world. 
And it's kind of like in fashion, you know, you don't need a designer to make you a couture dress for you to look hot. You know, you don't need a custom website to look legit. And I think you're the perfect example of this because you were legit long before we'd ever worked together. And, you know, you were using pretty inexpensive templates at the time. Your website was not amazing by any means, but you were and your work was. And there was this ability to translate that beyond what your website said and did. And so if you're listening to this and you're feeling like, man, if I don't invest $20,000 in my website, I I can't really get up my business off the ground until I do that. That's really a limiting belief that I don't think we have to be impacted by anymore. And I think it's really important not to kind of like let doing the work about the work distract us. And for us to kind of like let go of like the way we're trying to be online and then focus just on the work that we're trying to create. And that's going to rise to the surface. And I think we as creatives can kind of get into like shiny object syndrome where we feel like, well, once I have this beautiful website, then I can. And really it's, I've got to do that thing and then get a website that accurately reflects that. So I just, I don't think that you need a custom website to succeed. But (laughs) I also, on the other side, think that we are living in a time where the average customer is really intelligent and is hyper aware of brand. And they choose where to put their money based on aesthetics and connection. And they're looking for something memorable online. They want something that feels like an experience. And it's kind of like when you go to a restaurant, you know, you're choosing based on the reviews of the restaurant, based on like how cute the photos were of the interior or like whether you had a great experience with the waiter the last time. And that's how people are choosing to invest their money online. They're choosing based on those things. And so I think it's important to have a website that reflects that. But I don't think it has to be fully custom. And I think that's the magic of the internet now is that we have options, you know, and we have options that fit our price point and that fit our lifestyle. And I think that's a huge, huge benefit. Yeah. It makes me smile because I have run into so many entrepreneurs and I'll be like, Hey, like, what's your website? I want to check you out. And they're like, Oh, uh, just go to my Instagram. My, my website hasn't been updated. And I'm like, okay, but your Instagram, like, shouldn't be selling me things. I want to know like what you're selling. Your Instagram should be serving. And then they're like, Oh, no. Uh, and I feel like so many people are sitting in this zone today being like, I need a refresh or, oh my gosh, my bio doesn't even talk about the three children I've had since I created it or whatever that is. What are like five indicators or things that would tell someone it might be time for a refresh or an upgrade? Because I feel like a lot of people listening are probably like teetering on the fence and being like, eh, my website's mm, all right. But do you have like specific indicators that could maybe help us check the boxes of like, yep, she's speaking to me? (laughs) Yeah. And I I think that this is such a great question. I think it's really helpful to just be able to understand like, am I in the place where I need a new website or do I just kind of feel bored? You know, (laughs) and and those are two different things, you know, and I've encountered both. I've had people who are like, I've got to have a new website, Jen. And I'm like, actually, no, just keep working because your website's fine. Like, (laughs) It's not the problem. But I do think it's really wise to think through those indicators. And I think the biggest indicator is does it accurately represent where you are in your business or where you want to go? And I think that's number one. That's the most important thing. And I think, you know, that encompasses both personally and professionally. Does it represent where you are in your business or where you want to go? And I think this is the reason why we recently refreshed your website and your old website was great still. It looked beautiful, but there was the sense of that, like your business had evolved well beyond what we'd originally designed it for. We were still talking about photography. You know, it didn't have quite the, the same vibe. We didn't have anything about motherhood on your old website and a lot of your offerings were outdated. And so even though most people, like I was still getting multiple emails a week saying, how beautiful your website was, they want something similar. We knew that it really didn't accurately represent, you know, where you were in your business or where you wanted to go. So I think that's number one and that's super important. And then I think number two is, does it convert? (laughs) And this is something that a lot of creatives, especially overlook, is they're viewing their website as more of a brochure and something that just like looks beautiful, but doesn't ask anyone to do anything. And 
I believe that your website is a billboard for your business. It is like your most important sales tool and it should be selling your services and your products for you better than you can even yourself. And so really your website should be selling and it should be attracting your ideal customer. And so is it converting? Is it converting your ideal customer? Are the kind of people who are inquiring with you the kind of people that you want to be reaching? And if it's not, and if you don't feel like it's converting well, if you're doing all the work or your Instagram's doing all the work, or you know other people are doing all the work for you by referring you, then I think your website probably needs a refresh. Yeah, I 100% agree. I think the third one is like a pretty minor one, but if your mobile site, <laughs> if your mobile mm. site isn't amazing and you don't feel like it's as good as your desktop site, and you're like, actually, just wait till you can go look at it on desktop, yes. or you know, some things look a little bit janky on mobile, so maybe don't go to mobile. Like, if you're having those kind of conversations, oh man, it's 2020. Your mobile site is super important, and that's why we use the platform we use, Show It, which has an incredible mobile site. Builder so that you can customize everything on your mobile site to make sure that your experience is just as good, if not better, than people are going to have on desktop. Because that's just so vital when people are just clicking from Instagram. And that's, of course, like the first thing people do when they go to Instagram, yep. if they're interested in you, where are they going to go next? They're going to go to your website. Yep. So you don't want your website to be like the letdown that people have after they go to your Instagram. You want it to be like, man, I knew I liked this person. Now I know that I want to work with them. And yes. I think that's that's the closer. You know, your website is the closer. And I think that's so important. A hundred percent. I know. I feel like so many people do that where they're like, oh, I know I need to fix this. And it's like, oh, shoot. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And I think that like the website shame is real. It was really interesting because I was speaking at a conference, I think last spring. And this is a conference full of like very successful entrepreneurs and creatives who, you know, know aesthetics and know how important a great website was. And my first question when I got up, I asked, I was like, hey, like how many people here feel happy with their website right now? And then I did a show of hands. And then I said, how many people would prefer I not go to your website after this talk? <laughs> and it was like... <laughs> 70% of the room. It was so yes. many people who were like, no, like, please just go to my Instagram. And I just yes. was like, my Enneagram too, just like flared up. And I was like, no, guys, like, I can help you. It does not have to be this way. You should be proud of your site and feel great about the way you look online. And if you don't, like, there's hope for you. There's hope, I promise. <laughs> yes. What do you think are specific components that people should update on a frequent basis? We like literally started having this like review process in my business because there are so many things that change or that you forget to update or that you, you know, just put up a couple years ago and never changed. And I think that a lot of times people miss that. They do the website design or they get the template, they customize it once and then they forget to go through and update it on a quarterly or at least an annually basis. Yeah, I love your perspective on this because I think you're one of the few people I know who really gets this and gets that your website should be breathing and evolving and growing. It's a living thing. It's not just like an item on your checklist that you check off and then never look at again. And I love that about you because you understand that. And I think that the few things, you know, there are a number of things that you can update, but the really important things, number one, I think a lot of people miss updating their portfolio and they'll have yeah. this like dreamy project and they're like, this is amazing. They post it all over Instagram. They check it off the list. They're like, I promoted that. I'll get it added to my portfolio at some point when, when I have some time. And if all of your clients are going to your website, of course, you want that portfolio to be constantly updated with a showcase of the things that you want to do more of. And so if you're listening to this, go update your portfolio, add one project that you loved to your website and say like, this is what I want more of. So I'm going to add it. Chances are, if you post it on your Instagram it should be on your website right now. So instead of viewing that as like a dump task where you're going to do that sometime when you have time in six months, maybe you do a weekly refresh or anytime you finish a project, you add to your list 
add to Bartfolio and you get that updated. And, you know, with our templates, it's really easy to do that yourself. And so you're not kind of held hostage by paying a designer to do it for you or a developer to add something to your website anytime you want to add something to your portfolio. So I think that's just so important because, you know, our websites need to be able to move as fast as we do in this kind of creative economy. And so I think that, you know, that portfolio is incredibly important to keep fresh and updated. And then the second thing I think is really important to update is your homepage because your homepage is the item that is going to like make you most memorable to any clientele who lands on it. And so anything that you can do to refresh your homepage, even if it's just as simple as like updating about images of you, yeah. you again, like do such a great job of having really frequent brand shoots that just keeps things fresh, like showcase Coco, showcase like what stage and season of your life you're in that's going to resonate with your ideal client. And so I think it's a great idea to frequently update those about images that reflect your season of life and kind of are going to resonate people and and they're going to recognize you and see themselves in you. So I think that's another great thing to, to update frequently. And then lastly is just your services. You know, I think this is a great time to be able to control what services that you're offering on your website. And with COVID and with so much stuff going on, so many small businesses are having to pivot really quickly. And so if you don't have the ability to quickly say, hey, Hey, here's the special offer. I'm now doing micro weddings for this rate, you know, inquire for this specific package. And here are a couple of reviews that state that I can do that well for you. I think it's incredibly important to have that ability to pivot and offer services and keep your offerings really up to date as frequently as you can. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I totally agree. And I think too, it's been so interesting watching even the community that we live in, which is this tiny little town of 1200 people watching the local businesses scoot things to online and have to kind of catch up. It's like now is such a great time to even just set aside a day for this project. You can make so much progress when you're using a template. I genuinely think that most people could get a beautiful site up in a day and at least have a landing place for people to land on when they look for you online and just have a one page website and it could be so powerful and life changing. Oh, totally. I mean, we've had clients, actually, it's, this is a great story. We have this client named Catherine and she apparently was slated to speak at a big networking event and she didn't have a website. And so she knew that she needed something and she bought one of our templates that morning and she got it up in less than six hours. It looked amazing. It had all of her contact information, her services, like a very clear call to action It was one page. It looked fantastic. And she had it up within six hours and then went to her networking event that night and everyone was able to access and contact her that day. And like to me, that's the story. Like that's the story of Tonic right there. That's everything that we're trying to do is basically equip you with that ability to say like, hey, I want a website. I need it up quickly and I need it to look fantastic and be able to make that choice and take that ownership of something so vital for your business. And so we've just heard that over and over again, people saying like, hey, I'm going to get my website done this weekend, you know, and then they do, they grab a glass of wine, they get everything together and they, they get it done. And they finally don't have that hanging over their head anymore of like, man, this project, because that's the thing that I hear. I mean, I don't know if you hear this all the time, but I hear this all the time of like, oh, I've got to redo my website and it's going to suck yes. and I'm dreading it. I'm like, no, no, no. We hear all the time our clients saying like, I had so much fun. Like it was so enjoyable to put this together and I'm so proud of it now. And I think that that ability to say like, man, I I can finally be proud of how I look online is just incredibly empowering. What do you think are like the must haves for a powerful website? What do you think people, if they're just starting or starting over, what are like the three things that they should always include on their site? I love this question. I have so many opinions, but I'll limit it to three. (laughs) The title of my unreleased podcast is I Have Opinions. I think that would be it. I think that would be it. I have thoughts. So I think number one is some sort of brand statement. And a brand statement is just a clear statement of what you do and who you do it for. And this is something that I think a lot of creatives especially miss is they might say something like they have a quote, that's the first thing you see on their website, or they have like something very big about like capturing beauty. And you're like, what does this mean? What kind of beauty are you capturing? And so I think it's really important to have a very clear brand statement that says exactly what you do and who you do it for and how you can help. 
And ultimately, that's what anyone who's going to your website is looking for, is they're looking for, hey, what do you do and how can you help me? Why does it matter to me? And so I think that's so important. And I think that like your website, it says, I'm Jenna Kutcher, educator, digital marketer, podcaster, hype woman, overachiever, mama, and BFF who brings the good snacks. Welcome to our cozy living room, our classroom, our boardroom, and our research lab. And from that, I can take away exactly who you are. I can connect with you about like your little cute line about having the good snacks because I obviously want that good person at my party. And then I'm able to see how your website is going to relate to me. And so I think that's a very clear takeaway. We design all of our templates to have a very clear brand statement at the top of the page so people instantly have a place of going I know what this is I know what it's for it's not just pretty it has a purpose so brand statement for sure is number one number two I think is your unique value proposition and in marketing they call this the UVP but basically what makes you different you know why is what you do slightly different than what someone else does and I think that there are people who can be in the same profession as you but no one does what you do exactly the way you do it and Everything in your life, your entire story, you know, everything that led you to this point has equipped you personally, Jenna, to be able to serve your audience in a specific way. And so I think that you've done a great job and we really intentionally kind of wove that story throughout your website to make it clear where you're different. And we had this lens of like approachability and like, hey, I'm a mom just trying to make it to nap time just like you are and, you know, recording in my closet during nap time. Like, I think that. That level of approachability is your unique value proposition, and we've always known that. And so I think it's really wise to look at your process and your clientele. And if you don't know what makes you different, my favorite way of finding out is by asking. Because I think often we don't even know like what it is that you know sets us apart or why people want to work with us versus someone else. So if you don't know, ask some of your dream clients, ask some of your ideal clients, hey, what was it about me that made you choose to work with me? And then you can begin incorporating that into your narrative and make it clear, hey, this is what I do and this is why I do it and this is how I can help you and why I can do it better or differently than someone else. And in my case, it's kind of fun because I'm a journalism major. You know, I'm a writer by trade and by training, and that's still what I love. And it's something I've increasingly found a way to kind of work into my business and writing our email newsletter is now like one of my favorite things. But that's really what sets me apart as a designer is that background and storytelling and narrative and crafting something that's memorable and that has a headline. That's really set me apart more than it probably would have if I had just like gone to design school like all the other designers. And so that's my UVP. And it's been fun figuring out how I can weave that in and how I can make that a super, you know, differentiator in my business and our profession. So that UVP is number two. Oh, good. So number three, I think the other thing that's really important is just weaving in some points of connection. And we talked about this a lot in our first podcast. So if you're listening to this and you want to hear more about this, you can go back to episode two and listen. But essentially, you have to imagine the internet is like this giant cocktail party and everyone is walking around looking for something that they have in common. You know, you've been there, you're like, have we ever been to the same gas station? Like, hey, I also (laughs) wear pants. Like, you know, oh, wow. Like you have a daughter. Oh, I have a, you know, I have a son. Oh, how old you? That level of connection is something that people are desperate for online. And I think that there are so many ways that you can weave in those points of connection with your ideal client. And you can strategically say like, what do my clients have in common? And then what do I have in common with them? And how do I make them say me too at some point? on your website. And it can be as simple as telling a story about how you've struggled with something that your clients are struggling with. Like when I was planning my wedding, I felt so overwhelmed by all the logistics and all I wanted someone to do was to hold my hand and tell me it was all going to be okay and figure out my seating chart. You know, (laughs) that, that, that level of like, I can connect with you on a deep basis of humanity. I think that's something, especially during the pandemic, I realize more than ever, people are just looking for someone they can connect with. And we actually had kind of an interesting shift this year where we went from like writing more kind of generic marketing emails to I now just like write an email 
personally, very personally, yeah. telling a story about what happened in my week and kind of what's going on in my business or like a funny story that, you know, that relates to whatever I'm talking about. And it's been shocking to hear the response from people who are so excited to get an email from someone they feel like they know. And so I think that lesson has just taught me so much about marketing in this season that people, they want to purchase and buy from brands that feel like people. And any time that you can create a connection with them on a really human level, and make them feel seen and heard and understood and valued. It's so valuable. So that point of connection, I think, is really important. Oh, I couldn't agree more. I feel like we're all just craving to like know what's really going on in people's lives and understand that like while everyone's experience of 2020 is unique, there are so many ties that connect us. And I think everyone's kind of in this season of like, what is actually happening right now? Or like, what has happened to this world? But then we see things and we're like, okay, I'm not the only one. And I think that websites kind of give you that home for that. And I love that you brought that up because I think it's just so powerful. And I think it is a shift from the more curated to the more real, which we've all experienced over this last year. I sent an email out earlier this spring and I was talking about how I, like everyone else, decided I would clean out my pantry and I would like get my life together during the pandemic. <laughs> have not touched my laundry room. It's still it's still a wreck. So if you're listening to this thinking like, wow, Jen and Jen are really killing it, like I wish you could see my laundry room. <laughs> it's a hellhole. But I, I did clean out my pantry and I wrote this email about how like I discovered in the process of cleaning out my pantry that I was a quinoa hoarder and I had like this terrible, nasty secret habit of like getting Costco sized bags of quinoa and storing them in my pantry. And until so I had like eight unopened bags of quinoa. And I'm like, who is this person that consumes a lot of quinoa? Like, I don't know who that is, but <laughs> apparently I had this in my mind. And it was so funny how many people wrote back and loved. Loved that. They loved that little tidbit. And I still get emails now each week being like, hey, Jen, like pass me the quinoa or like, have you been to Costco this <laughs> week? Like slow down. And it was just to me that just like that little bit of humanity, I think is so vital and that people are just craving. And I think that also makes you memorable. And that was the other thing I was just going to say is if your website, honestly, this is like something that's, you know, a little bit controversial, but if your website is boring, that's a huge problem. And your website shouldn't be boring. You are not boring. Listening to this, like you are not a boring person. You have layers. You are unique. You are interesting. And if that's not translated to your website, if your overwhelming feeling when you scroll your website is blah, that's a problem. Because I think, like I said earlier, we're working with a really intelligent consumer now. And so you need to have immediate impact. You have like 0.08 seconds to grab someone's attention on your website. And I think it's so important that that initial impression be interesting. And so, you know, if you go to our website on tonicsightshop.com, all of our templates are designed to have, have like a homepage that just feels amazing. That you're like, yeah. this is legit. And I understand what this person does. And it seems really cool. And it's interesting to browse because I want people to just get lost in your website in a good way. I want them to just want to live in it and like pick up, you know, set up a tent in the corner and stay there as long as possible. Because I know that the longer they spend on your website, the more likely they are to hire you and to invest with you and to book you and develop a relationship with you. So I think that memorable homepage is incredibly important. One thing that I just thought of as you were saying that, that I think is actually super, super cool about templates. I mean, I love templates in every form of my life, like email templates. We create templates for processes we do. But one thing that I think we under advertise about templates is that there is a science and a flow of how a homepage should feel. And when you buy a template, it gives you that science, that blueprint, that roadmap where you just get to plug and play. You plug in your photos, you plug in your copy, but you kind of know that flow based off of the template. And I think that's something that we undersell because it's so important. I think a lot of times when people sit down to design their website. And I know in the past, when I was like my own website designer, I would pull up a bunch of sites, kind of look at what other people have done and start to mimic without understanding that. No, 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 no. Like there is actual science of like, 
here's where to introduce yourself. Here's where that UVP needs to go. Here's where you start to offer like your service. Here's where this piece needs to go. And it's so incredible because honestly, when you lean into a template, that blueprint is right there in front of you. And and it's showcased in a way that allows you to see this is where I put this. And this is a flow in the journey and the adventure that I'm going to take someone on, which I think is so cool. Yeah, no, I think you're exactly right. And honestly, like that science is the science that I've studied for now, you know, the past seven years. And so it's really intuitive for me to say, okay, first we establish interest, then we establish authority, then we have a review to back up that authority, then you show them the offering, then you ask them to take action on that offering. I kind of understand how people browse a website. And we've really studied that and learned how to do that in a way that's going to promote conversion and promote connection. And so I think that is a huge benefit of a template is that all literally someone has done that work for you. And I don't think that's probably true of all templates, but I know that with our templates, that's what we're thinking through is like, okay, what components would someone need on a services page to want to book that service? You know, on your portfolio, it shouldn't just have your portfolio. It should have a review from someone talking about their experience with you. Then it should have a call to action because the place where they're most likely to book you is on your portfolio portfolio when they say, hey, I saw that. I want that. And so those kind of decisions and those kind of really kind of layout sciences, we really have imparted into all of our designs so that, you know, you have a huge leg up and you're not just having to go, hmm, I wonder where my about section should go. What would look the best? And I think, you know, pretty is pretty, but pretty doesn't always convert. And so when you can do both, that's where you're going to see a huge measurable success in your online presence. Yeah. Where can everybody connect with you, like learn more about you, check out the templates? Where is the spot that they can go on the World Wide Web to check out all the things you talked about and more? Yeah. So we will have a special page up for Gold Digger listeners at jennalovestonic.com, jennalovestonic.com. Or if you just want to go to our website straight away, you can head to tonicsiteshop.com. And then you can follow us on Instagram at tonicsiteshop. And we would love to, we, you know, try to post up our templates, but also just some advice on branding and life and cocktail recipes and, you know, that the whole shebang. So you can find us over there. Oh, Jen, thank you so much for coming back on for round two. It has just been such a journey with you. And I'm just so grateful that to this day, we're still on this adventure called life and CEO ship and motherhood together. Nothing beats a walk down memory lane. And I am just so grateful to have Jen's experience and expertise back on the show She was one of the early adopters who believed in anything I had excitement around. And so I remember just figuring out what the heck this podcast would look like and having her be one of my biggest cheerleaders. Again, head to jennalovestonic.com for special discounts on their templates. And you can snag Jen's five tips to know if you need a new website there. That's jennalovestonic.com. I am such a fan of their work, their design, and their blueprints to create creating incredible sites that don't suck. So make sure you take advantage of all of the education and resources that they offer. And thank you so much, Gold Diggers, for all of your love and support. I cannot believe how far this show has come, how far I've come. And I'm just so grateful to share in this journey alongside of you. Until next time, keep on digging those biggest goals. And I hope to connect with you super soon. I'm over here giving you a virtual high five because you just finished another episode of the Gold Digger podcast. Did that go by way too fast for anyone else? If you want more, head over to golddiggerpodcast.com for show notes and all the discount codes from today's sponsors. And if you're looking for a new crew of movers and shakers like you to bounce ideas and ask questions, be sure to join my exclusive community for Gold Diggers on Facebook. The link's waiting for you at golddiggerpodcast.com. 